Hello everyone, and welcome back to Celasta Crown of the Magister Cataclysmic Iron Man Runs. Last time we made our first journey, climbed up here halfway up the cliff to Ker... Uh, not Ker Keflin, Kerlem, and dealt with some goblins along the way. Now Sarah, our wizard, was attacked quite brutally, so we're going to need to do something about that, and I think now is as good a time as any for some lay on hands. Where is Sarah? Which one, is, which one is Sarah? This one? Yes. And we'll give like eight points. Now how are we for spell slots? Two for the paladin. Two for the cleric. Nothing for the rogue. And two for the wizard. So we're fine for spell slots, really. We don't need to short rest quite yet. Now, down here... Excuse me. Down here, there is an encounter. And up here, there are more encounters. So let's see what we can do down in this darkness before we get higher up. Let's get cautious for the party. Climb down these vines. And as we move into the darkness, a lair of filth. Clear the goblin cave. All right, then. Making sure to try and avoid any traps. I'm guessing that the number of traps present is exactly the same in this difficulty, because there wasn't a modifier for number of traps present in the game. We should be cautious from now on. We should be cautious. Thank you for the literal terms of the game mechanics. Man, I'm nervous already. Knowing that this is Iron Man, and that if it all goes wrong, we have to redo all of the tutorials and all of the introductions. Right, half of our party do not have advantage. In fact, they have disadvantage on their stealth rolls. So let's get Scrooge McStab our rogue to just start creeping in and uh, we must look out for these things above our heads the AI is set to ruthless or something similar which means I believe they are going to use every trick in the book to try and get us dead fast but so far no sign of any foes containers, we've got buildings, we've got shabby cover there you go goblin skirmisher up top it's going to be a hard shot to make and if I could be up top first, that would be much more preferable, however I don't know that we would be able to get up there without getting seen and then bringing the rest of the party along. If they do start to see us, a eye will appear above their heads. But so far, so good. There's another one here. Things are looking okay. Let's bring the rest of the party in a little bit closer because if initiative is started, I don't want everybody, everybody being quite so dispersed. And of course, while we are cautious, the first attack we make should be a sneak attack, which will do a little bit of extra damage. Any more foes up top? None immediately obvious. Let's 
Oh god. Okay, we were... Just in the beginning stages of being seen by something over here, but that we couldn't see what that individual specifically was. Oh, it's probably this guy. Okay, that's uh, unideal. Now, do we leave our guy there and bring the rest of the party forward? We can squeeze through this gap. That's nice. That guy isn't able to see us just yet. If we try and go the longer way around, out of this guy's sight line. Can we get in behind this block as well? Yes. Okay. Back to our rogue. Sorry, this isn't the most thrilling beginning to an encounter ever, but I'm really insistent on trying to not die. Which I'm sure you can agree would be the worst thing. Right, we're going to try and sneak attack this guy. Right, they are surprised, which is good. Our sneak attack not quite getting in enough damage to kill them. But we are all top of the initiative. There are five goblins or goblin skirmishes. So I don't think we're going to be doing anything else with Scrooge. Although perhaps we just come around here, get ourselves some more cover from other foes coming in this direction. There's one up there as well. The climbing is going to be an issue, I think. Right, let's end Scrooge's turn. Up to Sarah. Yeah, to climb up to here is going to be multiple turns worth of distance, which is going to be a problem. So, let's get within distance of our paladin. And we are still hidden. So, let's ready a firebolt cantrip attack for whoever comes to our way. Because in theory, and I'm not, I've not really seen this occur, although I should be being more aggressive because they're currently surprised, so they're not actually going to take an attack action this turn now that I think about it for more than two seconds. So in reality, we could get up to here with two turns and like a dash. So let's do that. Dash. Gets us to here. Bonus action. Let's give ourselves a shield of faith because we are going to be closest to a lot of enemies. We would appreciate the better AC. And we'll make sure we have sword and board out to increase our AC even higher to 20. This guy has seen us. Now it is Jonathan's turn. I suppose there's no reason not to progress further around one pillar. We can put a cantrip on them. We could attack with our crossbow. That attack would be at disadvantage. Uh, would be at advantage because we are an unseen attacker. 
or we could use a cantrip. Let's just go with the advantage because we only need to do like one or two hit points of damage. Good. We're still hidden. Right. Surprised, surprised, surprised. So we've got three on the rooftops. Scrooge. I want us to be higher than we are. So we can cunning action dash. It's going to give us enough movement to get to here. And if we have line of sight on this guy from here, which the white line indicates we should, I could dash up even higher, but instead let's take a sneak attack while we can get one. Not a high damage sneak attack, but still, I'll take it. Sarah. Where can we get a line of sight on anyone? Here we can get a line of sight on them. And that's just about all we can get. Now what we want to do is kill this Goblin Skirmisher before they have a chance to see us, because that way we can remain hidden. Now we can Magic Missile. It will do four darts, because we get to cast it effectively at one level higher than we have. And this Skirmisher has eight HP. A dart doing 1d4 plus 1 averages at about 2.5, I think. It's a shame we can't see two foes. Maybe we will save our spell slot and just go with an advantage firebolt, because if we can get an 8, 9, or 10 on our d10, they will die. Four's not going to do it, and we have been seen. Eve is our paladin. I'm going to dash, and we can climb up. Hopefully we can split their attention among us, rather than everybody deciding to suddenly attack one person. Right. Again, we are still hidden. And from here we have line of sight against this guy. We could Guiding Bolt, but for 4 HP, Cantrip should be fine. And we still have advantage as an unseen attacker. And we managed to miss. Okay, that's not ideal. Let's give somebody some extra AC. Let's give it to Sarah, our cleric. Alright, now this is where we find out if we are going to get wrecked or not. Good, they fell, that's great. Plus seven to hit is so rough. Right, that one did not have a ranged attack, which is great. So back to the top of the order. My priority, I think, is getting rid of the low health one. So let's climb up here. And then we can step in, melee attack. Hopefully we can do four damage. Wunderbar. Right, with that done, we can cunning action. We're not actually in line of sight anyone from here, so we can actually hide. 
which is lovely. Sarah, our shock arcanist. We need to find somewhere we have line of sight against a foe. Unfortunately, we can't see that guy laying down there. We can currently see this goblin directly in front of us. So, let's just deal with it that way. I cannot believe it. Alright, well, let's find some extra cover. Eve, our paladin, is going to be able to attack this guy, who is currently led down, which means we'll have advantage on our melee attack. And with a crit, we're going to do 1d8. It's going to be 2d8 plus 3. I don't think we need to smite. Well... I should have smote because they've still got one HP, which is rough. Jonathan. Jonathan Turk. Cannot see that one. We can see this guy. We are not hidden. I think goblins are going to have reasonably high dexterity, so we won't force a save. We'll just do a melee uh, ranged cantrip attack. Excellent. I need to check something. We went with Firebolt. We are doing plus five. So it is Wisdom plus Proficiency, even though we that is a half-elf cantrip, I think. Could be wrong. Alright, these two. Furthest one away. And they're making an attack at disadvantage because they were doing a ranged attack against a foe that was within one tile of them. Our hidden rogue up here can sneak attack. Unfortunately, we can't get to a tile where we cannot be seen. If we could, we could hide again. But we can be seen from every tile we can reach. What we can do is cutting action dash and just get to a location with full cover. <sighs> Cannot see this guy. Probably can't see that one either unless from right here. No. Do we want to heal anyone? Wait, this is our Arcanist. I need to learn these portraits. I'm so stuck in the mindset of the old party. It's a mess. Alright, we're just going to take the dodge action. No, we're not. We're going to ready cantrip attack instead. Here, we should be able to just finish this off simply. He said, famous last words. Okay. Then there was one. Can Jonathan get in line of that guy? Yes. With two HP left, should be able to manage this. Fingers crossed. Okay. Well, never have I been so frightened by an encounter with four goblins. Let's go around and pick up the loot. We've got gems. We've got scroll of cure wounds. Let's just hand that off immediately to... Turk. Oh, we can't because they're too far away, I guess. All right. You can go towards that one. Where is Scrooge? You can start collecting these. 
coins and weapons. We could leave all of this stuff for the scavengers to come and collect for us, but we'll get a better deal if we carry it ourselves for now. Collect as many arrows as we can from what we've left. And we've got a scroll of sleep, a notebook, some angry violets, a prime dagger, and 20 arrows. Very nice. Right. Back to us down here. We can loot this final container. Then I think that's everything. We can simply gather the party back at the entrance. And in and out, 20 minute adventure. Nobody gravely injured. Still got some higher AC going on, which is nice. So now we have to make a decision about whether we're going to take a rest before we carry on up the mountain. Turk could cast a healing spell, although that would be the end of our spell slots if we did. Or we could take a short rest. If we take a short rest, we'll lose our shielded by faith for the benefit of maybe five hit points. But that is going to be a debate for next session. Thank you ever so much for watching. If you're enjoying the series, please do consider subscribing or hitting that like button. If you have any questions or comments, you can put them down below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.